By the end of this video, we'll have traveled 1,000 kilometers. Do you know how many miles that is? No. 622. Do you know how many photos that is? A lot. It's one. One photo. Ask me how many lenses I brought with me. I want to guess three. Three? Technically three, not including this one. How many did you bring with you? Three. You want to show me? Sure. All right. First lens, what do we got? Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter, f2.8. This is like my wide lens. It's gonna get me those wide shots that I won't be able to get with my other lenses. And it's super light. Sigma 35 millimeter, f1.4. This is my portrait lens. Last lens is a Sigma 24 to 70, f2.8. This is for everything else. Let me see what you got. First lens is a 24 1.8. This guy, landscapes and wide angle shots. Lens number two, a 50 millimeter 1.2. This guy is a beefy lens, great for portraits. I even shot a wedding on it. So it's in the camera bag today. Last lens, this is actually one of the cheaper lenses, but it's an 85 f2, f2 prime lens. So it's not a 1.8, it's not a 1.2. But like the 24 millimeters, it is a macro lens. And this guy is gonna be good for far away details, portraits, but uh, we'll see how this one comes into play. That's it, that's all I got. So you brought four lenses to do today, technically. When that one doesn't count. All right, let's go. Spot number one, downtown city photos. I think it's more of like a 24 millimeter scenario, but really the biggest thing is knowing what focal length to use in what scenario. That's why we talked about the 24, the 50, and the 85. 24 for me is probably something that I'm gonna use in a situation like this, in, in city landscape photos, anything where I want a really wide angle shot. I'm gonna try a few samples here, 24 versus 50, looking up the street at an iconic Toronto photo spot. spot and we need something for sunset. We're heading north and it's gonna be a little bit long to get there. So right now we're headed to the windswept tree. I don't know if you can you can see it. Is it focusing? <laughs> Anyways it is literally a windswept tree. Can we see the tree? That's the photo. Our boy Mike that's the photo he took. Mike's got a four star rating on or oh, is that the tree? Anyways we're going to see the tree. Yeah we gotta go see that. <laughs> we arrived at the tree! What is this thing? What happened? It's on crutches. Yo. I think the tree... Okay. Whew. Stefano, what would you rate this photo spot? <laughs> no, this one here? Hey Anthony, what do you rate this photo spot? This one right here, with the tree. Zero out of ten. Apparently this is the busiest windswept tree ever. We're gonna try and get a photo of it. We paid $18 to get into the park for 10 minutes of sunset, which is now gone because it's behind the clouds. We're never talking about this again. I'm no, always gonna bring it up. This is the worst thing to do. <laughs> Rich did not want to come here and we wanted to stop somewhere for sunset. It sounded good and it looked good in the photos, like Mike's photo. Mike, you did a good job, but fortunately the tree is not what it used to be. <laughs> I don't think I've been ever embarrassed to, to walk around my camera. I'm ready to drive through the night and see nothing special then stay here okay <laughs> all right we're going listen the whole point of this is I know it's funny and you don't like it and you don't like it because there's people but the whole point is you can find good opportunities good photo opportunities anywhere and part of that is understanding focal lengths taha come here come show us the photo you took because this is an example of how to turn something that was not exciting into something that's exciting that's an eight millimeter shot so on a crop sensor that's equivalent to something like a 12 12 millimeter? 11.9. The point is you can take good photos even when there's people around, even when the photo location is unimpressive. That's a great photo. The portrait I took of you is a great photo. Learn how to use focal lengths and make it work with the location that you're at.
We finished up some blue hour photos at the windswept tree and then drove another 300 kilometers north to shoot some astrophotography at 10 mile point where we set up in front of our Airbnb for some late night astrophotography. <laughs> How are your eyes right I, now? I can't see. We just came in from indoors. The cameras are outside. What did I say? You said you came from indoors. <laughs> we just came from outside, so it's it's really bright. I did some 24 millimeter vertical, so that's what that looks like. But right now we're doing a time lapse, horizontal, 15 millimeters. We did a couple exposures of the house and then a couple of the sky. What did you do? You're on same thing. 15 millimeters House, vertical or horizontal? Millimeter, horizontal and vertical. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So if it works out, here it is right now. <laughs> I shot this time-lapse star trail sequence during the Perseid meteor shower, which is what we had gone north to see. I was fortunate to capture a dozen shooting stars to create this photo composite, which might honestly be one of my favorite photos that I've ever captured. Is yeah. it not working? No. DJI, fix, DJI. <laughs> fix your stuff. DJ, help. Connection required. Fix it. Oh no. So part of being able to take a good photo in any location is of course knowing what focal length to use. Last night, I used the 24 millimeter to do a wide angle shot. Now I did a vertical shot of the cottage behind us and it turned out okay. What I ended up doing though, is I ended up turning to the 15 to 35, which is the lens I brought for video, but because it is ultra wide and just given the scale of the property and the size of the cottage and just all the geometry that we had to work with, it just made sense to use the 15 millimeter, kind of look up a little bit more so we got more of the sky and then do this sequence, which actually turned out really well. So I can do both a time lapse and a star trail photo with it because with the time lapse, I'm basically just showing all the individual frames. But essentially what I did, I left my camera outside, I let it run and shoot photos for an hour straight. So we got over 300 photos. And when you put them all together, you can of course do a time lapse, but you can also do a star trail photo. So you have a composited photo, you have the background, which is of course the individual images where you put all the stars together. And then you have the single still image where you expose for the cottage. And then that way you can get both of those together. But ultimately, that's the photo that we came up here to get because we have the meteor shower going. Now, there were a few meteors in the background of the stars that we got, not quite as many to make it look super spectacular. But of course, being August, we did have that meteor shower happening in the background of our photo. Now it's working. <laughs> and we're just launching some drones in the background right here. Are you flying the Mini? Mini 3? Yeah. Sweet. Did you connect to the Wi-Fi? Again, I'm very new. And it worked? Drone problems this morning. Apparently Taha did not have a connection to take off. But now he's got it. Sun's coming out. I think we're gonna shoot a few more photos. Maybe do a little bit of a hike today. Maybe use the 85 for some more telephoto photos. So. Stay tuned for the rest of that. Hey Anthony. Yeah. What do you rate this photo spot? This one right here? This one right here. On like uh, like a scale of like one to 10 maybe? Like one to 10 blog teal stars. What focal length are we talking? Like, like a 24, 50, and 85? What do, you, what do you feel? You can do a wide shot. You can also do a telephoto. You could do both. I mean, the scale of it suggests it would be a 24, but because there's not a lot of subject here and everything is kind of spread out, I'd be tempted to do 85 and get the layers, like compress the background. I don't know, there's not really too much going on. So like, Three out, three out of ten? You, you think so? Three out of ten? Three, three out of ten. Yeah. Gotta I think find so. a new photo spot. Stefano, what do you know about bears? Bears? Bears can be dangerous, okay? If you're like a survivalist like me, 
right, and you know how to handle them, listen. Plan your visit with safety in mind. The park office can provide general information. Okay, stop, stop. Stay safe, guys. There's bears out there. We're gonna die. So this is uh, my series, my new series called <laughs> Bathroom Chronicles. First shot is Taha coming out of the bathroom. That's a man who just walked out the bathroom. Okay. This is Bathroom Chronicles, part two. When can I buy the prints? Buy the prints? These will probably come out next week. Stay tuned, 10% uh, code in the description below. Bathroom Chronicles. Bathroom Chronicles, googly out of 10 for the one that printed me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. I don't see anything about bears. So I mentioned that we were gonna use the 24 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter, but we haven't really used the 85 millimeter too dude, much. Dude. What was that sound? Do you hear that? Yeah. There's something in the bushes there, dude. There? I, I mean, I think... 85. Dude, I think it's a bear, man. No, I think you're fine. I think it's fine. There's no bears here. Dude, I, I don't know. What? I've had bad experiences with bears, man. What the? Stefano? What the? Out of here. <laughs> Where's he going? Where's that? Where's that guy? Where's that guy going? I don't know. I don't know. What's, in, what's over there? Should we check it out? Check it out, hold on. Oh, Ta Taha, what are you doing in the... What are, you, what are you doing over there? I was, uh, walking. Don't you do that sometimes? Just walk? No, absolutely not. In the woods? I think he just scared off Stefano because he... He ran off that way, now he's gone. I think we gotta go find him. Yeah, we gotta find him. Oh shoot. Well, we're gonna use the 85 millimeter to shoot some shots from the top of where we're headed. So, uh, let's go do that right now. Do you guys see where Stefano went? Like he, no, he he took off. He like took off. Was oh, that him? Over He's there? gone. Hold on. Where's oh, he? there you are. Where'd you go? Well, I, I ran. Well, Where's why? The bear? Where's the bear? It was literally just. He was literally just Taha. I was walking. W what were you doing in the bushes? You sounded like a bear, dude. No I swear it was a bear. I think you're just paranoid. All that time you spent up north. I've had bad experiences with bears. You'd be, you'd be totally fine. You're safe. We don't have Will this time. Wish we had Will. He would protect us from Will would have protected us. I could take on a bear. Uh, Anthony? Oh, just uh, look the other way for a okay. second. All right, let's go. Hey, Stefano. Yeah? Remember that tree we saw yesterday? Yeah. How about uh, how about we do a better tree today? It better be a better tree after it's, all this. It's a better tree, I promise. It's a better tree. How many stars out of ten? So far, right now, this hike. Oh man, this is like a three out of ten. It's killing me. Three out of ten. I guarantee. Add, add at least another five for the view of the yeah? tree. Yeah. See why they call it the crack? We got cracks, cracks all over. I can't even see it yet, but I believe it's. That one right there. Wow, that's a beautiful tree. <laughs> so the whole point of this trip the 1,000 kilometer trip was to catch the Perseids meteor shower. It's one thing that happens once a year in August. You have really like three days to capture it. But the point is that the photos that you really wanna take, the best photo spots, those photos that are the ones that you wish you had, aren't necessarily gonna be the ones that are just outside your front door or in your neighborhood. Sometimes you do need to travel a little bit to get to a photo spot to take that photo that you really want to take. 24, 50 millimeters, 85. Lens selection, of course, comes into play when you're trying to take the best photos possible. The elements of composition, lines, textures, shape, lighting, <laughs> like right now the lighting is really harsh, but we're making it work. We're finding those shadow spots. We're playing with the light to make sure that the composition looks good in the end. It can be really discouraging when you travel so far to take one photo. You spend hours, like we're, we're almost 24 hours into this, to think that you post that photo, it gets seen for, you know, five seconds of a swipe on your Instagram feed and, and then no one ever sees it again. But remember, photos aren't necessarily for other people. They're to remember the moments like when you're out with friends and having fun and really just capturing those memories inside of that photo. 
Anything else? So I think that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more photo adventures like this, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this, check out this one right here. And until the next one, go shoot photos. Sigma 16 to 28 millimeter F2. Just wait, the streetcar's coming by. <laughs> Sigma. Broken now! Stefano, what do you know about bears? Okay, bears? I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs>